Hello everyone, how it's going? So probably you already saw my, my previous video regarding to the third hand or over engineer third hand. I will leave you here a card that uh, you can go there directly. And basically in this video, I will show you how I make all the parts that they are needed to convert this uh, dial indicator holder into this uh, third hand for electronics. So please, if you like this video, subscribe. Uh, don't forget to give it a like because uh, help me a lot. And uh, let's go with the arm. So we are going to transform this mechanic arm into this electronic arm, right? So what the first thing we will need to do is to do the base that I will show you later the part. And uh, later on, we also need to do the, the arm that it is here and also the clamp, right? So we need these three parts because the arm itself, the structure, we will be taking it from this uh, dial indicator holder. So if we go here, basically what we see is that the, we could reuse the magnet uh, base, it's not needed to do the new one, but as you can see, it's quite uh, bulky, right? So in case we want to place uh, several uh, arms close together, this allows us to be able to put them together in an easiest way. So that's the reason why I decided to redo the the base. So basically the first thing we need to do is to unscrew the base that basically it uses M5 uh, thread. We are going to put there the base. You can see the size comparison, right? That it is quite consistent. So basically as I said, uh, we are going to reuse the arm because it's really useful for this application. And uh, here it has M5 uh, thread. So the part that we are going to do now is this uh, base. It's done by or is done uh, with uh, aluminium in the late. So everything is done in, in the late. We'll need the milling machine. And basically we need to turn it to the thread and this uh, counterwork here that this is called in the magnet that it is a uh, 19 uh, millimeter or ideally it's 20, but it will fit in 19.5 uh, magnet that it's going to be held by this M5 screw and uh, this is going to act as a base, right? So now uh, I will show you how this part is done. Okay, so now we are in the late. Uh, basically, we start with a 25 millimeter round uh, aluminum stock. In this case, I am using a 7075, but it does not really matter. It's not critical for this. And basically, I am holding it on a 3 yo chuck in the late. And the first operation that uh, we are doing is uh, facing uh, in a way that later on we can fix there the magnet and do the boring. Uh, in this case, it is not critical to use the for your chuck because basically we don't need to keep any concentricity between operations. Uh, we are going to use the, the same setup for all the parts. So now uh, we need to start uh, with the turning. Uh, we need to reduce the diameter to 22 millimeters, which it is going to be the, the final one. And as you can see this part, I am grabbing it not so deep into the chuck. I will not recommend this, but I wanted to take the chance to use all the, uh, let's say, aluminum that I had. And basically we are using a, a carbide insert for the turning uh, with a radius of uh, 04 millimeters. So the next operation will be drilling. In this case, as you can see, I am using this quick change uh, tool holder from PV Tools. Uh, it's A size and the uh, cylindrical holder that I have modified as Stefan Gottesvinter uh, did with a drill chuck in a way that we can put drills till eight millimeters with not that much hang out. So basically here I am using a spot drill or NC drill with uh, 120 degrees for uh, the operation that uh, we are going to do now that basically is uh, drilling the part all through because uh, later on what we are going to do is thread it completely because we need basically M5 thread in both uh, ends one for the dial indicator arm and the second one for the uh, magnet I am using the late carriage in order to, to drill the hole because in this way uh, as you can see what we can do is enter drill and uh, go out in order to uh, remove all the chips and go again in a way that uh, we can do it faster uh, with the tail stock 
it will take more time, it's less suitable, and at the end I will say it's uh, less practical. So I really like uh, this method uh, for drilling because I'd say it's uh, really fast. Next step will be boring. So basically uh, what I am using here is a CCMT insert with a carbide boring bar. You don't need to use carbide boring bars, but I bought this some time ago. It's uh, basically more read. And uh, what we are doing here is mark the starting point and basically bore from the around 5 millimeter uh, hole that we have. Uh, I can do this with this boring bar in a way that I don't need to do the hole uh, bigger because ideally for an 8 millimeter boring bar you will need around 9 millimeter or 10 millimeter uh, hole already. But in this case, with this uh, type of boring bar, is not needed. So and with aluminium, is not a big problem with steel would be another thing because as you can see the pass uh, I do is uh, relatively high but with aluminium works uh, perfectly I don't have that much hung out on the boring bar and basically what we are doing is to bore till the final dimension which is around 4.5 millimeter uh, depth for the magnet and 19.5 uh, millimeter of uh, diameter in a way that we can later on insert the magnet uh, properly. After having the hole for the magnet done, what we are going to do now is to thread all the part completely because the arm and the magnet it's, uh, both are going with M5 screws. Basically here I encounter sinking in a way that the tap it will enter better and taking a zero reference with the end of the tap in a way that I know how deep uh, do I need to go. When uh, threading, we put a bit of oil and uh, we are using basically the late carriage in order to, to drill. I know that the tap side is small, but I am following a bit the carriage with uh, my hand in a way that uh, it has not that much pressure only for the thread. And basically this is an easy task because it's aluminium. So uh, I am using the, the late uh, power in order to do this thread completely from beginning to the end. Uh, what we are going to do now is to check that the magnet fit. And this is the first time. So previously you saw that the part had a bit more hung out. So basically what we are going to do here is uh, take the magnet as a reference in order to reduce the extra material that we have on the on the outside part and also the the first time on the screw because uh, the screw it has a bit of overhang so we need to reduce it a bit i did a tool that i will show you later in order to do this in uh, all the screws so basically we take the the same carbide insert that we use for the aluminium turning and uh, we are going to use it for taking a reference uh, on the magnet and later on uh, do a one pass that uh, what it is going to do is reduce the extra material from the base itself in a way that has perfect contact with the surface and also uh, we are going to continue till the screw in a way that uh, we are going all the way uh, till this center and we have a really flat surface that uh, we can put when we are using this tool properly in the magnetic, uh, let's say, plate that we use. Now we are going to start with the last operations, which are uh, parting and uh, chamfering. And basically, I really like this parting tool because it's really, really positive. And for this kind of lights that they don't have that much power, it's uh, really suitable. It's doing the job quite good. And as you can see, I am using relatively high uh, feeds and RPMs. Uh, I recommend you always you can to use the automatic feed for the transversal carriage on the lathe for parting and uh, also fix the position of the carriage. So as you can see, it's working perfectly. Uh, we are going to stop this operation in a, in a way that uh, we are going to do the, the chamfers before. We are going to do one chamfer in the base or at the end and one chamfer here when the parting is, uh, or where the parting is uh, happening because in this way it's easier. Otherwise, we will need to part 
the, the, the piece completely and later on put it again in the in the chuck and yeah it's just easy in this way and the one recommendation while doing these chamfers is that when you load the tool do it continuously because if uh, you don't do it continuously you will get a lot of chatter and this is mainly happening when you do chamfers that they are quite wide let's say or the tool it has a lot of load now we can end the part once we have the chamfers so basically we are using the same party tool and uh, we are finishing this part the only thing that will be remaining is to chamfer a bit the other end of the thread and the, the base will be ready so the next step will be to perform or to adjust the screws and now we go with the screws that basically we need to reduce the head a bit because they overhang from the magnet and we want to have a flat base I make this fixture that you can see here that basically is aluminium part with a M5 uh, thread and countersink in a way that we can screw and unscrew the screw sorry for saying screw that many times and uh, reduce the head for having it perfectly adjusted to the to the magnet and also uh, in this way we can easily do different screws so we only need to take the surface or the head of the screw as reference and reduce it around 0.3 millimeters we can remove the screw and uh, put the next one and do the same in a way that we have a repetitive way to modify the screws in order to fix them on the base okay so we already have here the base done completely and as you can see the result is quite good we have here the hole for the magnet as said and uh, as you can see the finish of the parting blade is good enough in order to keep it like it is uh, so basically for the assembly it's really easy we have the base the magnet and the screw the screw has been reduced as i showed you before and the only thing we need to do is to put the screw through the magnet and assembly everything together into the base in a way that we have a perfect alignment between the screw and the base so we can put it on a plate that uh, it's made by metal or uh, stainless steel that it is magnetic so now that uh, we have the base we are going to put it here and uh, we are going to the second part so basically the second part and one of the most important ones is the arm so we have the ball that we will need to drill and also this arm done by uh, stainless steel that uh, I'm going to show you how it's done basically we have few operations on the lathe and the one on the mill and also this screw here that you can see that it is going in this position in order to fit the tool that we want to to assembly what we are going to do now is to drill the hardened 11 millimeter bolt bearing so basically i would recommend you to use two uh, softer materials in order to fit it or to uh, support it in the vise because otherwise you will mark it since it's uh, quite uh, hard and uh, as you can see here i am using aluminium and brass and uh, second step we need to do is to basically center or find the center of the ball for this we have two options so the first option is as you can see using a coaxial indicator it's a bit expensive tool uh, for me it's enough for this usage it's not maybe so precise as a dti could be but i work uh, faster with this so basically we adjust the center position on the top of the ball so we can drill just exactly in the middle and the second option as I said I will show you is using a DTI as you can see in the in the screen so you only need to find the center going around with the DTI and you should be able to do the same like uh, with the coaxial indicator as I say there are two methods the two are valid I will say it's more precise with the DTI but for this uh, both will work and now what we are going to do is to drill the ball so for this I am using six millimeter carbide drill because as I say the ball is hardened so HSS will just not work I am using it dry and around 1000 rpms 
and I must say that it is the first time that I use these kind of drills and I drill these kind of uh, materials and uh, it was really easy. You need to push gently and as you can see the chips are uh, really good. You don't need the coolant and uh, in this case I needed to drill around 5-6 millimeters in order to later on being able to push the coupling that it will work for changing the different tools on the third hand. So, as you can see, uh, we have the drill, it's really imperfect. Uh, in this case, I am really satisfied with this drill and let the hole while it precise, I was measuring, and it was just a spot at around six millimeters, so just perfect. And the second step we do with a carbide uh, chamfer mill, so basically we remove a bit the bore from the edge in a way that later on we can easily with a bit of uh, Loctite introduce the holder into this bowl and the, the support will be ready. Now we go with the tool holder. The tool holder is done with uh, stainless steel. In this case I am using 12 millimeter round stock that basically we need to reduce to 10 millimeter for the tool side and 6 millimeter for the side that it is on the bowl. Basically, I am using a carbide uh, insert that it is really sharpened because the stainless steel tends to harden. Basically, on the 10 millimeters, the precision is not so critical, but as you can see, we spotted quite well. And uh, basically, what we need to do now is to reduce uh, one of the parts to uh, 6 millimeters, and this needs to be a bit more precise. So I am doing some rothing uh, passes and later on I do a spring pass in order to uh, go to the dimension that uh, I want in a way that we can use later on Loctite to press this end into the bowl. So as you can see I am measuring here for the last uh, pass that I have around 6 uh, 200 uh, millimeters so we need to go to 6 as said. So we are doing the latest pass. The speed that I am running is around uh, 1200 RPMs, so it's quite fast. I could go faster, but I will need to change the pulleys on my lathe, so for the moment this is quite suitable, and as you can see the result is uh, quite good as well. So now, what we need to do is to chamfer, a generous chamfer on this side, because it's going to go into the bowl, the, the drill that we did before in the bowl, and uh, we are also hitting the other side for uh, chamfering. And to complete this in the lathe, what we need to do now is to use the parting tool to part the piece that we are doing into the correct dimension. So basically I am using the, the same parting tool I used uh, before for the aluminium and I am applying a bit of oil in order to make the work a bit easier. I would say that stainless steel is always challenging uh, I am not going so fast here in the feet, but in the speed I am keeping more or less the same speed. Uh, I would say that it is better to go faster than slower with this kind of uh, tooling. And I am using the automatic feet or the, the power feet uh, from the late for the uh, transversal carriage and as you can see it's going quite well for being uh, stainless steel and considering that my lathe uh, has not even uh, one mm, CV of power. So basically the part is uh, finished here, we put it the other way around in the chuck to do a final operation which will be uh, remove this small uh, material that remained here that used to happen time to time when you part and uh, I could remove this with a uh, file but I must say that I consider more suitable to do it in this way because the, the finish is much better than using a file while trying to keep this surface perpendicular. So basically I use the same uh, carbide insert as you can see it's really sharp. I would highly suggest this kind of inserts uh, for stainless steel in not big power machines and uh, basically the only operation that remain is to uh, make a small chamfer so again we are using the same tool like we used before so we make uh, a chamfer on this side 
and uh, I will say that this part is almost done. The only thing that uh, we need to do right now is to move it to the milling machine because uh, we need to do a pair of holes and also rim one of them. So let's go there. Now on the milling machine, we have the coaxial indicator again. The idea is that we find the center of this uh, piece because we will need to do a, a five millimeter hole rim and offset 1.5 millimeters. The reason is that uh, I would like to have a bit more material in one of the parts to put M4 uh, stud in order to fit the tools. You are gonna see it. And also you see the setup that I am using that basically is a hexagonal ER32 uh, block that uh, you will see why I decided to do it in this way because uh, I need to do a second operation and it will be more suitable. So as you can see already here, the coaxial indicator is indicating that the, the tool is uh, in the middle. So that's uh, perfect. And the next step uh, we are going to do is to use a point drill in order to mark where do we need to do the hole. So this is a carbide NC drill to mark the, the hole position. And uh, we are going to drill a 4.7, 4.8 millimeter uh, hole 10 millimeter depth uh, for later on remit. I must say that for being a stainless steel, maybe I should go a bit closer to the final dimension around 4.9, but I am still uh, learning how to apply the drill steps for the, for the drill rimmers and more it depends of the different materials. So as you can see here, uh, we are already drilling the part. I said it's stainless steel, so it's not so easy as aluminium, at least for my knowledge and for these small machines, but everything uh, went uh, fine. Later on, as always, we are doing a chamfer. Chamfers are quite critical. And uh, after this chamfer, what uh, we are going to do is uh, use the rimmer in order to go to the final dimension that it is five millimeters. Here you see that I use a feller gauge for uh, checking the distance and later on know how much deep uh, do I need to go. So I am putting the rimmer on around 200 RPMs and with a bit of oil uh, rim this hole in a way that later on we can perform or we can create a small piece in order to insert the different tooling that uh, we are going to use with this uh, arm. So right now you might understand why uh, I decided to use this block because in this next operation what we need to do is a hole on top okay and it, Using this method, what I ensure is that uh, I keep the, uh, the distance in the middle and I only need to, let's say, mark the, the hole, let's say, in a way that I don't need to somehow fit, which is the upper position, right? So in this way, I know that the hole, it will be absolutely perpendicular or yeah, in the middle of the, of the other hole. So we mark it. We are going to pilot drill it for uh, later on using a tap in order to perform or to do a M4 thread for a M4 stat. One important thing that uh, I suffer here is that the tap, I needed to reduce it again because it has not that much engagement for the M4 itself. So you are going to see and basically this is the chamfer again so we do a generous chamfer in order to have a good finish and also good engagement between the tap and the part and this is what uh, i was uh, saying that basically i was using a tap a bit modified in order to be able to go till the end of the hole because as you might know uh, at the tap when it starts is not having the, the enough diameter, so we need to go further. And due to the fact that we have uh, the hole there, we cannot go more. So I needed to modify it a bit and uh, reduce it. But basically it worked. I say, or I must say that I need to buy a new tabs because these were, these were uh, manual tabs. And for stainless steel, I will say that you need a uh, good tabs. But anyway, everything worked. Uh, the thread was perfectly done. I did around three parts and it was working. 
and the, what we are going to do after this basically is to insert this uh, stainless steel part into the hole that we did in the bowl with uh, a bit of Loctite in a way that uh, we have almost all parts for the arm completed. Now in the vise I am using Loctite to keep both parts fit. Even this is a press fit, I prefer to use Loctite as well uh, just in case. So basically a bit of Loctite in uh, the parts clean and we put together the stainless steel holder with the ball and basically what I am doing is to use the vise in order to apply the enough force to insert it and using another uh, part as reference in a way that I know how much do I need to insert it. And basically that's all for the tool holder. So. Once we have the part done, basically the only thing that it is pending here is to put the M4 stat that basically it will work to hold this uh, tooling that I plan to do more in place, okay? So I will show you later. Once we have these two parts done, the thing that it is pending is to us to disassemble and let me put this aside, the, the arm holder that we have here and replace this part with this one, right? Because this one, it's intended to be used with a dial indicator. So basically we need to disassemble the arm in this way, okay? So as you can see, this is the part that we are gonna take out and the, what we need to do is to press this up in a way that we have here a bit more play. And if we introduce a screwdriver between the ball and the spring we are gonna take it out as you can see it's almost there and take her because it's really going out fast so as you can see this is the part that we need to remove and we are going to insert later we put this here okay in a way that we can have this now and what we are going to do is to put again this that probably with the screwdriver let me see yeah like that okay so like that we have it already almost inserted a bit more here like that okay so we already have it as you can see once you have a bit of practice you can do this relatively fast and the, the only thing that it is pending in this case now is to put this here to put this in a way that because you see that this part has like a chamfer so this chamfer needs to be together with this one so we put it in position we introduce this and we put the chamfer in the same direction and we can already put this part and it's working perfectly so we can fix it fix it already it's not moving and uh, we have this one here so basically the last step in order to have the arm is to fix the base here like this we apply pressure if we lock it this will not move so we can apply pressure properly and i will say that it's done. The only thing that it's remaining is that I show you how we do the, the tooling. So basically this is the interesting feature of this is that you can remove this one and I can put it here. Let me extract this one a bit like this. And they are exchangeable. So we are going to do more of this. And now what we are going to see is how we do this so now we are here with the latest part basically it will be done using brass because it will be soldered into the crocodile clamps and it is a material that can be directly soldered with an iron soldering so basically we need to do two reductions here we are using 10 millimeter round stock 
uh, we need to go till five millimeters on one end to be able to insert this tool into the arm as you saw before and the other part needs to be around uh, four millimeters and the reason is that it will go into the crocodile clamp so we take here a reference measurement in order to enter it into the DRO the five millimeters need to be more or less exact and my idea is that uh, I will do uh, only one pass as you can see so basically I can remove till there and just applying a bit of scotch bright to, to finish the part and it will enter perfectly so we are doing one pass with brass this is possible and also in this way I don't need to use uh, the tile stock which makes this uh, operation much easier so now as you can see it fits perfectly that's the intention and the M4 stud will fix it and now we are turning the other part or the other side that in this case needs to be around four millimeters and since it's not critical I do just spring passes and you can see that uh, the intention is that this fits as you can see and we are going to solder it later so we do chamfers as always don't forget them and uh, I will say that this part is much done the only thing that we need to do is to part in it that I am going to use the same tool that I was using in all the project because I say it works perfect for all the materials so we are parting this and basically we have already this uh, piece that it will complete the build for the uh, over engineer third hand as you can see this is done just a bit of filing and we can go to the fully assembly and here we have so basically these parts done which are the latest part that we need for the third hand and basically we need these clamps that they used to go with four millimeters banana in a way that the idea is that we put them here okay in this way and uh, we solder it in a way that we keep it fixed you can also keep it in this way because it will not move and uh, yeah basically we can put this here as well as you can see and the, the idea behind this is that we have this and uh, we can exchange it right so we have the arm here and easily we can put it inside we can pick this screwdriver fix it and it is not moving so this is the latest part this is how I finalize the third hand and basically that's all for this video I think it's already long enough I wanted to show you how I did all the parts and uh, in future videos probably I'm going to show you more accessories that they are going to go in this uh, holder here because as you can see it's really easy to, to change it right so I hope you enjoyed this long video if you like it give it a like uh, subscribe to the channel also as I mentioned on my Instagram you can take a look uh, to what I do because I used to post more often there and uh, see you in the next video